Okay, there's your toy oscilloscope, the Fluke 199C. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're displaying the Ainsley Channel B uh, with the uh, gray probe right here. And it's hooked up to the Ainsley circuit at the circuit side of the current viewing resistor. And on the negative battery side of the current viewing resistor, I have one scope probe ground, another scope probe ground, and then another scope probe ground. And then I have the function generator, which is connected up to the function generator, and there's a ground there. And then I also have uh, the uh, 555 timer connected to uh, this oscilloscope. And so all of the oscilloscopes are grounded together uh, through their uh, probe grounds. <laughs> uh, the fluke. Uh, the fluke is isolated from the house power supply, uh, and I can uh, prove that to you by coming over here and uh, just unplugging it for a minute, and I'll show you its power supply. Look at that, there's only two prongs on there, uh, and the fluke is actually still running, so I'll, I'll just set its power supply down right there. So you know now the fluke is, well no, actually better, it would be better to go ahead and plug the fluke uh, in, right? So we'll plug the fluke in. Uh, and now uh, you can see right, that little symbol right there means it's running on the line. When I unplug it, going, see there that changes to a battery. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in, going, so it's running on the line. And uh, like I said, we're displaying trace B, which is uh, the same as uh, this trace B here. This is the current input, or the, rather the, uh, the voltage uh, drop across that current viewing resistor, right? Okay, so same thing over here, uh, except I have it on a different time base, right? Because in order to compute uh, a duty cycle, uh, and in a moment we'll do the frequency too, but in order to compute a duty cycle, of course, you have to have at least one full cycle displayed. And if I uh, change the uh, time base on the fluke to where we're actually looking at uh, a little bit more of, a, of that ring down there on the end, far here. See. But now of course since there's only one uh, bit of a cycle there you don't get a good uh, duty cycle computation. Right? What it's doing there is it's trying to compute a duty cycle just in here but of course that's erroneous. Okay so we'll go back now to where we have uh, more than one waveform displayed, more than one cycle displayed and uh, you can see that it's going to try to compute a duty cycle based on that. But it's not showing a duty cycle here. That's because it's very difficult for the flucoscope to resolve very short and very long duty cycles. Okay, so here is the duty cycle control of my uh, uh, signal generator right here. This is the variable pulse, and we're on the pulse, and this is the control that I've been turning all this time to vary the duty cycle like that. Oh look, the light goes too. Okay, and on the flucoscope, I'm going to turn it down to no, no duty cycle, and then I'm going to turn it just to where it starts coming in, and the scope triggers there. Okay, and you'll see there's no duty cycle resolved there, because it's too short. Okay, now if I go a little bit more, I'm going to slowly crank up the duty cycle, and there, there you go. I can't seem to get anything as short as uh, 3.7 today, although I have been on earlier occasions with perhaps a different uh, load. Uh, the fluke drops out at uh, 3.7 uh, is the shortest I've seen, um, and will not indicate very short duty cycles, nor will it indicate properly very long duty cycles. Okay, if I crank that duty cycle all the way up now, and, of course, I have to move the triggering. Okay, if I crank that duty cycle to a very long duty cycle now, like that, you can see also that the flute doesn't resolve that until it's a little bit shorter. And uh, then we get some interesting little numbers there, 93.7, 96, 
So somewhere around 93 to 94 is the short, uh, the longest duty cycle. Oh look, there was a 97. Okay, 97. Uh, but it's not locking in. It's not reporting it reliably. Okay, so there's that. Let me crank it back down to a uh, to that short duty cycle now. Okay, so uh, and by the way, we also have the 555 function generator running, and you can see that it's got that short inverted duty cycle. So when I switch that on the fluke, boing, there you go. Long duty cycle. Short duty cycle. Let's uh, get it to where it can, can actually resolve it, so you can look at the numbers. So I'm, I'll set it at about 10%, okay? And uh, I'll also set the 555 at the inversion of 10%, if I can. And I'll even... Okay, so that looks about right. That's 10% or so. So now we'll switch there. Okay. There. Okay. So that's the difference between the signal from a true uh, five five or a, a true function generator setting at uh, ten percent, and uh, the five five five, which is uh, inverted and uh, can't produce short duty cycles. It can only produce long duty cycles. Okay. Now, next, all this time I've had the uh, ground lead, which is earth ground. It's hooked up under the sink to uh, the sink, okay, to the cold water pipe of the sink, and it's hooked to the negative terminal of the battery, which is hooked to the negative input to the Ainsley load, and look, there's all those scope grounds right there. So the scope grounds are tied to earth and to the negative pole of the battery through that ground lead. Now I'm going to connect and disconnect that and we'll see how the scopes behave. Uh, let me put the other trace on here. Okay. Blank, blank, blank. You see any difference there? I don't. What about on the fluke? That's grounded, earthed rather. That's not. That's earthed. That's not. Okay. So there's no difference as far as the scopes go if your system is properly hooked up, properly energized, and properly isolated. You can have it hooked to the ground, earth ground, or not. Okay? But now watch what happens here. If I have it disconnected from the earth ground, okay, I'll just drop that on the ground for a minute, then I disconnect the battery, well, the circuit goes to sleep, right? So I hook the battery back up, now the circuit's running, all the oscilloscopes, oh, uh, 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 and now uh, we go and we get the ground lead, and we'll just to avoid any kind of ambiguity, we'll just plug it in right there, okay, and again, that didn't make any difference in what the scopes are doing, nothing at all, right, right there, and now I'll unplug the battery, boom, and now there's no current return so the circuit dies. So now I'll plug the battery back in like that. Okay. Now I'll take the, the earth lead and I'll plug it back up to where the battery is like that. And then I'll unplug the battery while you're watching the scope. Okay. And there's that big old spike oscillation with uh, the ground loop uh, and the fluke. Here we go. Battery on battery off, battery on, battery off, battery on, battery off. And let me put the A trace on there, okay. Uh, so uh, A, put A on, right. Okay, so there's the A trace on there, and uh, you can see it's got that huge spike in there. Battery's off right now. Battery is on now, and it settles down. Battery off, battery on. So it doesn't matter whether your scope is isolated, like this one, or not isolated, like these. On, or rather off, battery off, battery on. Battery on, battery off. You still will see the same thing, okay? Uh, thank you.